Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I've got a 60 minute soul journey session that I'm doing for a client. So I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals here and then I'm gonna be getting connected. Okay, so client says, I'm really open for anything spirit has for me. I'm slowly coming out of an intensely dark time in my life and I'm looking for healing and guidance. I wish for guidance in light. Okay, give me just a moment here. I'm just absorbing in this energy. Hmm. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah. It's almost like energy is being pulled from my face, like um, like from the tip of my nose, but it's like across here and then upward, and it's like being pulled from my face, and there's a uh, black and kind of a tealish color. So they kind of merge together, and they create this energy slide. So it's like pulling out and then coming down. It's just this like continuation of this energy coming out. Okay, hmm. I'm just examining this right now. There just feels like some disconnect going on here. It's almost like, keep looking at this, keep looking at this, keep looking at this. And it's like, well, okay, great, I've seen that. What about the heart? What about the um, the mind? What about, like, what is the interconnected meaning between all of this? Because it's not just this thing, it's everything. So how is everything working together um, to create this? Or what is this all about? Hmm... I just start sending threads of golden energy into the stream here. I just start sending literally little threads of golden light and it's just streaming through it. And I'm continuing to kind of swirl this golden light here just around the eyes and just around the mind and even above. But it doesn't feel so connected on the third eye and the crown, but I am going up with it. It feels really associated with like right here. See, and it's hard for me to bounce into your heart. It's like wanting to keep everything above. It just keep it up here. Just keep it up here. So I'm just really trying to get into your heart, and it's sort of like boinging me back up here, up here. But that's not, that's not for, like, I can hang out up here all day long, but I want to see what's going on in your heart. I want to get another interpretation of this. And so your energy field is sort of like pushing me out of your heart and saying, no, 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 don't go there. But that's really, I mean... That's more like a fear-based thing than anything. <sighs> the next thing that I do is my hands turn to light and I just, I'm just sort of like lying my hands here on, on your face, just like, just lightly, just gently um, placing my hands like this. And the energy is starting to slow down. It's starting to slow down still. There's still, so you say you were going through dark times in your life. There still seems to be some like dark echoes associated with this. I mean, I keep seeing faces, dark faces kind of thing. I'm still slowing your energy down here, and my hands are still just lightly, gently sort of touching your face just like this. It's getting extremely relaxing. I mean, I feel really relaxed. <laughs> I'm really curious why... I'm not able to get into your heart yet, but clearly I'm meant to just, whatever the next thing is here, it keeps bringing me back to this slide thing. 
but it's it doesn't have the same energetic meaning as we slow things down as the light is sort of shining here it's slowing all these energies down and it's separating whatever this is about and as this frequency alters it has to change it has to become something new but it's still kind of there and I see these sort of um, different faces so like uh, just dark mischievous faces kind of thing man we are slowing things way down here even slower still I'm almost able to get into your heart almost I'm almost there. All this still, slowing all this down. I'm starting to feel more energy, more information here. It, information is just energy circulating, okay? So I'm feeling more energy circulation in the third eye and then above the head, sort of like the crown area here. More back to you, more about you. And allowing this, whatever this is about, to just slowly just disconnect here so it doesn't really exist anymore. Because we're working with new energies now. So whatever that's about, that can just go way over there. Has nothing to do with who you are now. Because who you are now is vibrationally different than who you were just a little bit ago. <laughs> What have you been through? I mean, I'm seeing you being choked and not able to speak. I mean, there's a very mischievous face and a very strong hand that comes and wraps around your throat and it's really tight and strangling of you and it lifts you off your feet. It's almost like you've been really picked on here. I mean, there's other sort of beings here that's just like they're wanting to pick on you. And you're quite defenseless against them. You ju they just kind of manhandle you and you're defenseless against it. I mean, there is still something going on here. And these are... These look like dark entities. I like to get more into this to sort of really feel out what is this about? Why is this here? What is your connection with this? There's so much more than what things look like. All right, so there's finally some some new information is coming out of your eyes. And, and it's just anger, all right? There's anger right back here, like where the temples are behind that, where the eyes would be. It's just anger right in there. All right, I'm going to do something crazy here, but this is what is the next inspiration. We're going to swap places. So I'm going to have, but, but this is a little bit different than that. I'm going to put this mischievous face here. I just want to see what, what it does. So this mischievous face is like this big hand, this big being is like holding you up and choking you and you're being strangled. And it's like this energy is coming out and you've got this anger behind here and you're defenseless. Um, but there's something strange. I'm supposed to do this, taking that face and putting it where your face is. It's really freaking everything out. <laughs> it's all changing here. It's literally mass confusion. Everything that was seemed to have a flow and a structure and it looks like this and this is the way that it is, now it's just like mass confusion. And what's going on? <laughs> And this face looks kind of like a tree. Um, like if a tree could have a face, it would look like this. And it's, it's like sort of made out of bark in a way. But it's smoother, but it's also like a tree. And that's the face that is now here. You got so much going on. 
there's a lot of weird attachment things going on here. Back of the head, above the head. I'm still trying to get into your heart, but we, we've got to get this. We have to deal with this. This being that I, I took his face off, basically. And now he's look. It's like he, there's some sort of mass confusion. And he's not sure what he is anymore. And you're just basically a puppet. I mean, you're just basically lifted off your feet. There's nothing. You have no power. You have no ground to stand on. You're just lifted straight up. You just messed with. And these attachments, I mean, the more I'm standing here, I mean, the more dense these attachments feel, the more exhausting. I mean, it's like a giant branch just went through the, your back of your head. This has nothing to do with this face. We're just talking about what these attachments feel like, and they're like really big around, like tubes. Like you could have uh, energy cords, okay? And they could be like a, th a thread, or they could be like a string, or they could be like a wire. Um, but this is like massive. This is like the whole back of your head is an energy cord <laughs> to something, all right? The whole top around of your head is an energy cord to something. You have so much energy stuff going on in the head, and it's keeping you away from your heart, right? So when you want to get balanced in life, you have to work with your heart. This is going to, if you're just a head, you're not whole, <laughs> all right? And a lot of life encourages us to be just a head, but um, we have to be all the parts of us to be in balance, right? So, <laughs> all right, I'm just going to continue to just slow this right on down here, okay? Slower still. Slower still. Slower still. I'm just moving through like uh, walls, frequencies of anger here. It's like flowing through a tunnel and sometimes you hit frequencies of anger. It's very weird energy. It's not a liquid, but it's like a liquid, but it's also light, but it's very, um, it's light that is not healthy light at all. It's, it's light that is poisonous light and it's yellow. You're having some reactions in your throat here. I'm giving you the ability to feel your feet on the ground. You're standing on the ground. You've been in a super dark place. I mean, not just in a dark place. Like, you can go into dark places. Like, um, let's say people who are depressed could go into a dark place. And it's not, it's like this is something different than that. I mean, it's all like. I mean, you just walked into a really dark place with a bunch of misfits that are just toying with you. And depression is different. It's like, um, it's like a delightful, yet slow, yet miserable attachment to suffocation. <laughs> but it's entrancing and hypnotic. But it's not necessarily a bunch of um, misfit type spirits just messing with you. It's like you're in a place where you're being messed with. How in the world did you get here? And why? Why did you want to be here? I'm still slowing you way down here. I mean, if you're on the um, coming through the other side of a dark time, man, you, you have some massive... Um, reflections and echoes of what you were going through, but there's still like there's still massive stuff here connected to that. So to clear this out, you're gonna feel like a totally new person, like totally brand new person. 
I'm, there's still this giant branch in the back of your head, above your head. Um, now I'm able to see there's one coming out of the heart too. In the front of the heart primarily. The throat has like a jam in it. Again, allowing your feet to feel the ground, okay? Wow. How are you surviving? Like, life must have been absolutely difficult. <laughs> there is no mobility here. There's no joy. There's no skipping. There's no freedom. I mean, there's straight up branches of energetic cords going through you. <laughs> I mean, and they're huge. They're not like a thread. But don't be mistaken, threads can be big cords too. It just depends on what the energy value of it is. But these are huge. These are like massive attachments. All right, I'm entering to a new thing. It's like, um, it's a circle. Um, it's like being curled into a ball and it creates, it's like a spiral shape. Um, oh, it, it's a crying thing. Just a second. Uh, there's just a lot of agitation here about this. <sighs> All right, hold on. <sighs> okay. <Whew>. Okay, this is. <sighs> I'm just sort of chilling out the energy a little bit, okay? This is also, um, this throat jam is just like kind of vibrating, like you can tell it's in there. And I'm just like chilling out the energies. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> it's gonna be just fine, just chilling out the energies. This is a, this is like, um, like a little, I keep seeing like a little animal that curls up into a ball. And it has, um, is it a hedgehog? Is it, is it like Sonic the Hedgehog curls into a ball? It's like, but it's like a poor defenseless animal. But it looks like, reminds me of a hedgehog. Um, and its entire body that's curled up is it also kind of connected to everything that's around it above and the walls and the floor. And it's just like, it doesn't have any room. It does not have any room. And it's just crying. <sighs> Just, I'm, I'm just interacting with it right now. Your consciousness is able to cope with seeing this. The throat is starting to wiggle again a little bit. Um, I'm actually finally getting some energy reactions in the solar plexus here, so that's starting to move now. And that feels like a big old lump in my gut actually staring to hurt but you see how we're starting to get these like uh, energy centers to communicate it's not just about the head here I'm trying to get more energy communication so everybody is working together you are gonna feel like a new person because your energy field is so extreme that doing these shifts and changes I mean you're gonna feel like a totally new person <laughs> okay so I'm just allowing solar plexus here to just um, be noticed, be acknowledged, get a hug. Um, heart gets a hug, throat gets a hug, third eye gets a hug, head, crown gets a hug, like front, back, above, head, like the whole, you get lots of hugs. <laughs> you get hugs everywhere. <laughs> All right. Okay, anger. This is just venting, okay? This is just pe like a pocket, so it's just like pent up anger. It's just venting. <sighs> You're just so mad. <sighs> Did you get like duped by somebody? Like somebody uh, like, take it, like took advantage of you and kind of figured it out later and it was kind of scoundrelly? Cause it just feels like you're mad at somebody. <sighs> Like this pocket, it's like just a pocket where you stored some anger and it's just like you're really mad at somebody. And it's ju a justified anger. It's not like a selfish anger, like I didn't get my way, so now I'm mad. It's like it's a super 
authentic, raw, justifiable anger, like being taken advantage of and figuring it out and just being pissed. <sighs> okay, that's good because as I'm talking about it, things are opening up more. Like you're literally opening up more, almost like you were kind of closed, um, like, like some sort of something grew and then it closed you inside of it. And it's now opening up and you're exposing your chakra bodies. Like you're exposing this like line of energy here, which is uh, universes of energy. But you're opening this shell up and you look unusual. I mean, I don't know, like are you some sort of strange like ostrich like bird that has many different colors? Um, kind of defiled, but it's like a weird eggshell, but it's very thick grew your skin kind of grew into an eggshell so you have both like wings but wings that come around and close and then it closes an eggshell so you're closed inside of this i just feel like that you must have i don't know were you harassed were you it's just like um it's like a difficult chance to just be you. It's like being you is going to make sure like you you're going to be um toyed with. You're going to be messed with. So you you have nothing there's like nothing else you can do except this. Curl into a little ball, but everything seems to be stuck to you. Um this bird just closes the eggshell around in order to like survive this. Um, and it feels just like a lot of um, harassment or mischief and um, it's not fair to you. It's not allowing you to be you. It's like taking you away and just doing whatever it wants to you and you being the victim of it. But there's anger. There's a lot of anger here to it. Naturally, there would be. But it's very specific type of anger. Again, your stomach is starting to feel like it's got a lump in it and it hurts. Like, it really hurts. This is good because, I mean, I'm starting to get information here from your other chakras. So I'm just like kind of like, hello, hi, how are you doing? Oh, thank you for sharing. Oh, that's so great. So I'm just like putting really happy energies. It's just like, you're wonderful. You're great. You're so great. You're fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. I know you've been through so much. Oh my gosh. You need lots of hugs. You need lots of fun. So it's just like, pew, 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 pew. <laughs> like there's just so much information that moves so fast. I couldn't possibly repeat it <laughs> Any in, in this human world. It's just too slow. But lots of love going in there right now and encouragement for the solar plexus to continue to share. And it's doing a really good job. And don't be afraid. I, I'm like telling it to don't be afraid because I know that there's a lump going on in here and it doesn't feel good. So sometimes when things don't feel good, we just want to kind of numb that so then we don't have to feel it. But I'm encouraging solar plexus to really feel it. It really needs to feel this. Really, really needs to feel this. I mean, just like you saying this, just it's just okay. It's okay. It's okay to feel this. Just feel this. And I just keep saying that and I just circulating the energy. It just, it needs to continue. We need to keep activating your, your chakras here. Like they really need this. Like desperately, desperately bad. Okay, I'm ground, I'm again with the feet and grounding you and as I see you grounded, that there's something, there, there's so much going on here. Um, there's yet another thing. Uh, I still haven't figured out what this thing is, but it's something big and it's attached to the entire back side of you. All right, this, this is a painful thing as well because where the feet are standing, they're ground now and I'm starting to, I, like there's just a big heavy thing. It's like a refrigerator is attached to your back. Um, I'm starting to see your sink, your feet are like sinking into the ground, but instead of grass, it's like, like needles or something and they're like rusted nails and they're just piercing through your feet. And I can see it, like I can see you slowly sinking into this. It's like blood is just seeping out. It's just like, a lot of it's just suffering there's just a lot of uh, suffering going on here I mean I'm still trying to make sense is how in the world did it get like this like how are you living your life like this 
it's impressive that you are living your life and able to keep your head up um, going through this. All right, this heavy energy on your backside, man, it's so ridiculously heavy. It's like carrying a refrigerator on your back everywhere you go. Uh, the more I acknowledge it, the more it starts to kind of come full circle about itself and the energy shift, which means this is just going to release itself naturally. But let's see if we can understand it better. Just hold on. It's just it's a lot of response. I mean, it's just like there's just reaction going on here. So it's just letting it react. <laughs> there's like a little tiny voice that says, don't hurt me, please, please don't hurt me. And it just says, please don't hurt me, don't hurt me, please don't hurt me. It doesn't trust, it doesn't know if it's okay to trust. Like, even if an angel were to come here, it still wouldn't know if it, if it could even trust an angel. It's just like it's been too defiled for too long. It just literally doesn't know for sure. Anybody can put on a mask. Anybody can say that they are good until you discover that they aren't good. And now you've been messed with. Now you've been just... It's like you, it's like mischievous um, minds here that are messing with you. Can't even tell if it is good anymore. Like, what is actually truly good? Okay, so again, this, this is actually good because heart and solar plexus now are starting to kind of share some information together. And it's just like, it's just coming out gently. Like, um, it's like a purple water, actually. It's <laughs> really interesting looking and it flows. It flows. And so it's, I'm just experiencing that right now. And this is kind of bringing me into the sacral chakra, sexual body area. Because we need to really help to just open all this stuff up. Okay. So, fridge is still on your backside, just so you know. <sighs> We're just continuing to get energies to react, to see each other, to have conscious interactions. Like, you have energy bodies that are brains. So now that the brains are being, um, hey, take a look at this. Hey, take a look at that. Oh, 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 really? Oh, wow. <laughs> so this is like uh, happening. So it's amazing how much you could actually heal yourself just having conscious awareness of things and just bringing that attention to your different energy bodies. Because this fridge is just going to come off on its own. But just a second, you're having a reaction again. <sighs> Like, kind of feeling a bit stuck. Oh my god, I'm getting, it's like a stomach ache, but it's moving down into the sacral chakra. It's like, oh, like a, like a stomach aching feeling. Oh, it just doesn't, it feels like I ate bad food and it's going through the entire digestive system. It's like, and it's gross. Like, it's a gross feeling. Like, ugh. Like that. Okay, so this fridge thing, it's, it's interesting. It's just starting to tell me some more. It's almost like a turtle shell. Like, um, you know, turtles have a big old shell on their back. Well, you have like a big old fridge. <laughs> I mean, it's like a big old energy on your back, okay? <laughs> and so it's like somehow it's protecting you on the back side of you. It's, it's, that's kind of the message you're sending me. And I say, well, do you need that? You're trying to remember why you put it there in the first place. You say that you're sure that, that this is important. You're sure it's for a reason. I mean, you're actually thinking, like wheels are turning here as you're looking at this fridge with me and it's like trying to recollect what what this was about again <laughs> you're starting to feel sad about it 
It's like, it's, it's a storage thing too. I mean, you're showing me yet another image. This isn't the turtle shell now where you have some sort of like, um, something to shield you. Um, it's now like a deep freeze full of what looks like, um, babies frozen in a freezer and carrying them everywhere with you. And you tell me you can't let go of this. And I say, well, what are you going to do with it? Because this is unreconciled stuff here. And so you're just saying basically that you don't want to reconcile it. You just want to carry it on your back and then see it also as a turtle shell. It's doing you no favors. Because, so, we're stopping here. Because you, it's weird, it's like you've been walking this whole time with this fridge on your back, like this ultimate, like, backpack. And uh, you have a part of your consciousness come out and we're just walking behind you trying to make sense of this attachment thing. And then, um, so the part of you that's walking stops and then we're opening it up and it's more than just a fridge, it's like a deep freeze. And there's all these frozen babies inside, so... Um, like we're touching one of them and it's so cold like it burns your fingers turn to like blisters is what it's like and you're it's like you're trying to remember you're really trying to remember that's familiar you keep saying this it, that it's familiar I'm just trying it's like you're trying to remember and I'm telling you things like you know well, babies have a lot of different symbolic meanings and they could be parts of yourself that you are protecting or um, you know it, it, I mean it could be anything it literally could be anything but I'm kind of sending some uh, some memories I have of having seen babies and other journeys and what they kind of mean and um, see if it jogs any ideas oh you're uh, you're closing the door and your eyes are kind of turning black like really dark and scary looking and I start to feel a weird shift in the energy and the sky turns black and there's uh, water and we're kind of like on a really big boat on the water and the water also looks black and there's lightning and lightning strikes the water and it's I do feel safe on the boat though I mean I do feel safe on this boat and this is interesting but there's something having to do with children and this boat is taking children to different um, to like another location and I don't know if they're children's slaves. It feels like children's sla slaves. Chil specifically, children are being transported at the hull of this boat. And this is very um, overwhelming because th there's something about this image and this scene that I feel is heavy inside your heart. I mean, it's almost hard to breathe. The heart aches that bad. It's like I can even feel it in my breath, the aching of the heart. And I don't see anything happening, just that the weather changes and the sun comes out and the boat is still on the water. Something weird, though, is happening. Because I don't really see anybody on the boat anymore except everybody in the hull now. And there's a strange, like, um, it's like a mold or, or something growing. I don't know, it's like contaminated something. And it's like uh, everybody's getting this contaminated, there's some something, it's kind of contamination. I 
I just don't see anybody just driving the boat anymore. They keep showing me this hole and the, that's contaminated and all these faces have like green mold on them. And nobody is driving this boat on this beautiful sunny day. It's like everybody died. It's really bad because even as I'm talking about it, it's like um, it gets really rancid in this hole, like um, the stench of rancidness. It's really awful. It just and it grows and it grows and it grows and it develops and it gets very dense and putrid. It's so flippin' dense. It it could even blow up the bottom of the ship. It's like the energy is so dense that it could like open the boat up. Uh. All right, you're seeing this and it's making you feel like you're seasick and you want to puke, and you want to vomit, and your your energy and your solar plexus is like spinning and stirring and you're wanting to throw up and you're dizzy in your third eye. And you're angry. And you can't go back, you can't change the past. Mm. And I, I show you that you can always change the past. And that's a misconception. You can choose forgiveness of self or forgiveness of others or acceptance. See, these are changes. So let's say you couldn't accept what took place in that lifetime. Well, you can choose acceptance later. And you could choose to accept that lifetime, which changes that lifetime. Changes all the energetic meaning and attachments and everything related to that lifetime and today's life. So the past then sort of overlaps the present and then creates future. It just goes around and around and around like a circle. All right, the, this is uh, showing me a new a new thing. And the heart is kind of opened up, and it looks kind of like uh, butter and cheese. And it's, it's almost like a knife kind of like mangled it up. And it just looked like mangled butter and cheese. <laughs> so it's yellow and orange. And it's like on your heart. Or it is your heart. I mean, I just see this like exposure of this stuff. <laughs> and that's your heart. So I'm looking at this here. And uh, part of you that's uh, talking about that life, you're wanting to set fire to it. I mean, I see you wanting to see that boat go up in flames with all that, that rancid smell and the density you just want it to all go up in flames. And I see this old, 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 old man who is lying down, which has this weird butter and cheese thing going on with the heart. And it's all kind of an odd interconnected thing. I see this old man now stands up and he's got chains, shackles on his wrists and on his ankles. And he's so old and he's forced to walk. I don't know how he's doing it, but he is still walking, but he's very weak. He has a long beard. He doesn't have much hair on his head though. He's skinny. It's a very, 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 very long walk. Uh, why is he still walking, though? It's like he's walked miles and somehow finds the strength to keep walking with many, many others. Why? Where is this determination coming from? Like, you're determined to survive this <laughs> at, at, like, 80 years old. It's, like, so... It, it's like you're extremely weak you're somehow continuing to walk. You could fall down at any time and just 
you know, that, that could be the end, right? <laughs> he isn't doing that. He's just going to keep walking with everybody. There's like this determination inside of him that he will keep walking no matter how worn out and worn thin and weak and exhausted he is. He will keep walking. And he's shackled to other people. This is different because it's not really telling me if this is like slavery or if these men um, did wrong and now they're having to be punished for their choices and this is kind of something having to do with that because that idea came to me as well so it's not helping me to understand and my spirit guides say well does it matter exactly it, we're looking at an old man who is finding the determination to keep going and I say well I do think it matters I do think it matters because if this is like this man has been in slavery for his whole life or let's say this man just came into slavery recently I think there's different energetic values to this image and this meaning than if this man had done some corrupted things some crimes and now is being punished for those crimes because there's different energetic meaning to that, how it affects the mind, how it affects the emotions, how it affects the life purpose, how it affects the soul. It, it's different to me. That's what I say to them. Okay, we're going to look at both both versions of this. So right, so right now, let, let me see how they want to begin this here. They're showing me the man now has reached a location and he's put into shackles and um, he's against a cement wall. And it looks like blood stain on that cement wall. And they're showing me how some people who are called committers of crimes are actually only committers of crimes based on what other people believe. So let's say that you um, believe in, uh, you have some weird uh, religious belief now you could be committing crime to some other religious belief so does that make you a criminal or does that just make you somebody who's making a choice and there this is what that choice is so they're kind of showing me that crime isn't always what we think it is and this is making me sad and your consciousness is watching this old man on the shackles and all this blood-stained wall and it's like a concrete or a stone or it's a gray in color and there's blood on it but it's like it's been blood that's been dried into it like I can see it's like it's dried into it it almost looks like rust and the man is hanging there and he's waiting a very long time he's just hanging there like he can feel his feet on the ground but he's just like waiting and the sun is out and it's really hot and he just I don't know what is he having some sort of spiritual like um, awakening because even now he it's it's like it's not determination it's just receiving like God's grace I mean I feel him receiving the sun and when he receives the sun he feels liberated he feels free even though we would see him in shackles he feels liberated he feels free inside of himself and he's okay he's okay with his life he's okay with his walk he's okay with his journey he's okay with this moment and he's okay if he were to live this moment still for many more months and years before the sun would finally take him because that's what he describes it as he says the sun will take me when it is time and this is pretty disgusting but there's a really awful event that takes place and there's lots of people with stones and there's one really big massive stone and uh, somebody chucks it right into his face and it actually like his it like collapses a cheekbone or something like it's actually so mortifying to watch this, this old man being stoned. There's a lot of sorrow here about this. 
and then um, questions of the soul as to what is right and what is wrong and confusion about that is it a crime or where I was I just doing what I was doing it's a crime to you but it is not a crime to me like this is also one of these questions this is really disgusting I mean I'm seeing it is so disgusting to watch this it's so strange how people would be okay with watching somebody's body like flesh is literally being these rocks are sharp like clearly they're like cutting flesh off and it's like it's gross it's blood everywhere it's really gross it's an old man I mean this is horrifying how is he so strong how is he okay with this it was more so a battle in the mind of why and what is right and what is wrong and why why that's like this battle in the mind being stoned and saying why but why man like a philosopher type mind I don't I feel like a lot of uh, relief release kind of like it like that's all fading out all the grotesque and gruesomeness of that event is all fading out and it doesn't really matter where the spirit decides to go as the human it felt that it would be taken by the sunlight to a new place like the sun as a portal to a new world but the spirit doesn't seem to go into the sun as thought by the man it lingers around this place and it stays in a deep state of trying to understand why and it doesn't leave the soul stays to try to understand why and it looks at this life it looks at this scene many 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 what would be like unfathomable numbers of times it relives this it relives this it relives this it relives this unfathomable numbers of times it, un it really relives this And I go to that spirit and I say, is there anything else you need to know about this? Because maybe there isn't an answer to the question why. Maybe the answer is there isn't an answer. Maybe that could be an answer. He says that's not good enough. Uh, this is exhausting. Something is changing here. Very exhausting here. It's just a lot of circulation in the third eye, the solar plexus. I keep seeing a flicker of that refrigerator or freezer with the frozen babies turns into many rocks. But it turns back into frozen babies again. And there's talk about lifetimes of doing what is quote unquote a crime to one is not a crime to another. And having lived both sides of being a criminal or a bad person and being a good person, so called quote unquote, these are all choices. Is it a bad person that throws the rock when society says throw the rock? Is that a bad person when thousands are now doing it is kind of what this this question is. Are they the murderers or are they the the justice team, you know? They are doing God's work, God's will. They are fulfilling a karmic debt by stoning this man to death, so they are fulfilling his karmic debt for him so he can endure this nightmare. So he can find relief from something he did in another life to hurt others. So you have this man who is a child trafficker, so to speak. And now in this other life, it's like this slave that is now stoned to death. So which one is good? Which one is bad? There's just this confusion here. 
and a part of your spirit is trying to make sense of what it, it feels about right and wrong, good and bad, crime or not crime, like what is it? And it needs many, many, many lifetimes to help it understand this concept. Your soul, your soul. And we're talking about your soul here. And it's this is to give you a new a new sense of strength because whatever this mischief stuff is about, now that your soul has had this uh, reflection on right and wrong, good and bad, crime or not crime, through this journey, it's all coming back to you and you have a new energetic relationship about being taken advantage of, you know, being messed with. It's almost like you're at peace with this because it's okay to let go and move on now. It's time to move on now. It's almost like everything that you've been through this dark the these dark times you were mentioning, it's like it, it's like the final um hurrah of this deep phil philosophical soul learning. But they're showing me there's still all, there's still going to be this, but um this is going to help you kind of wiggle and move and shift out of something that was like um it was holding you off of the ground like it wasn't allowing you to stand your ground and to now be you it's okay to let go now of the fridge slash freezer <laughs> You're still thinking because you were responsible for those kids. I mean, you're still like processing that. I don't even feel like I get to tap into the meaning of all that was about. I'm just allowed access to just this. Because you're really in deep thought still about that boat more so than the man that was stoned to death. I ask if he needs forgiveness. Is that what this is? Forgiveness? Do you need to be forgiven? Do you need to forgive yourself? Or do you feel guilty? Do you feel like, what is it that you're holding on to truly here? He says, I'm simply holding on to the past. And I can't really move forward in life with this past. But I am having a hard time letting go of it. I show him how there's uh, dimensions of awareness and that when he's ho holding on to this like strap to him it's like holding him into a dimension of awareness that is down here if he chooses to let go of it I mean he can always come back and pick that thing back up again anytime I tell him that it's like you can let this go for just a few minutes and then find yourself in some other dimension so you can get some differing perspectives on it and once you've gained those perspectives, you can come back and you can, you know, keep going where you left off. Or you may realize that it's okay to let go of the past now. You just needed a break from it to come full circle and now to move on. See what he says. Hmm. Saying like, well... He's just saying, no matter where I go, it will always be there, even if it isn't. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of like, it's always going to be a memory of mine kind of thing. No matter where I go, it'll always be there. But there's so many other memories. Like, why is it just this memory? This is the only, one and only memory. What about all the other memories? You got good ones. Give me a moment here. 
It's getting very exhausting. Um, he's kind of, it, it's interesting what he's saying, it's something like, um, it's like I just want to wake up where, in a beautiful world kind of thing. And as he says it, it trails off into an ocean and a beach, and a man lying on the beach, and the sun again. And the man is with the sun, and the sun is like spirit, and spirit is with him. And in one version, I see all these gross worms coming up and out of the sand, and they're like defiling him. But in another version, the worms never come. And so the question is, what is he, what what is his punishment for his crimes? Is it a mourn beach with the sun, and spirit is with you, and a happier world? Or is the punishment for your crimes to be eaten by these gross black worms? It's like you can continue to punish yourself for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, and thousands of lifetimes. Or you can know that it's safe to just enjoy the warm beach. You do have a hard time allowing the warmth in your heart to just radiate there. You do. Because even now you're actually thinking about it. <laughs> and you're thinking about yourself as being these gross worms that defile and eat people. <sighs> Which is okay. And I show you yourself as the ocean water. I show you yourself as the fish. I show you yourself as the sand. And as the sun. And as the clouds. So you don't just... I mean, it's like, I'm the gross worms. Well, if you're the gross worms, then you're also this beautiful beach. This beautiful ocean water. This beautiful sunlight. These beautiful clouds and this beautiful blue sky. You're also all of these beautiful things. You're not just the gross things, you're the beautiful things too. You're still holding yourself down because it's like you, you feel like you still need to be punished for something that you did in some other life. And so you're punishing yourself. So really you deserve to be picked up and uh, meddled with by mischievous beings that want to hurt you. You deserve that. That's what your deeper soul says. This is beneath the conscious mind. That is what your inner essence is saying. And that's not true. So this is what I'm going to do here. <laughs> I'm um, putting you in a very lovely orb. And I'm taking you away from the scene here. <sighs> I'm going to take you into the sunlight. That's where the man that was stoned to death, he really felt strongly that the, there would be the spirit of the sun would come and take his spirit back to the sun and that the sun was actually a portal it was actually a portal and uh, that never happened because once he kind of um, transitioned he stayed he stayed very close to that dimensional plane and thought for a really long time is what it's like just relived the memory in unfathomable numbers of times in order to try to make sense of something and he became attached to it. Spirits do this. People don't realize that spirits stay attached to things. <sighs> and parts of them stay and parts of them go. Like we aren't just one soul, we're many parts of ourselves. But that part needs to, needs the sun to come. <sighs> but uh, I got 
you in this orb here and I'm gonna take you to the sun. And I see that uh, you somehow brought these worms with you and they're, they're not a, so big, they're kind of like uh, earthworms and they're black and when they touch you there's like an acidic, um, it's almost like they excrete some type of acid to, to burn, like, to burn down the mater organic material so then they can eat it. And it's like so many of these worms that are burning you down to just substance that they can just eat. It's really horrifying. You're doing this in my orb where I'm taking you into the sun. I gotta do something. There's a, a gateway and there's a woman here. Not what I expected. I expected it to be super bright and but it's like I just reached a landing and there's like cloudy type and like beautiful white soft clouds type energy and then uh, this beautiful like golden gate type thing and there's a lovely woman here very peaceful very patient this is your specific chosen gateway like you chose this gateway there's so many infinite numbers of gateways, but this is your gateway. This is your, like, your gateway. I mean, she, she's really telling me this. And I place the man on the soft clouds before her, and he's just, I mean, it's it looks like the old man that was stoned to death, and, um, but these black worms are here too. He's just absolutely exhausted but he won't die in this. It's like he doesn't let go. He just has a strength and determination. And even after he was stoned to death, he still like doesn't let go. Like even now he's just, she asks him if he's ready to see what's on the other side of this gateway. His belly aches and is in sorrow for what he's experienced. She's, she's talking to him right now, a bunch of different things. It's, a, it's in a very honest and understandable way, but it's also in a very loving and gentle and compassionate, patient way. She's not telling him what to do, she's not forcing him to do anything, she's just talking to him and helping him cope with this. There's definitely a shift going on in this head region. Very exhausting, but it feels good. Still feels like there's more lifetimes, like other things that you've been done, seen, um, that you're still working through. But you're, I mean, it just goes to show the extraordinariness. You know, that you are exploring all sides of the perspective here, which makes you a well-rounded soul, right? It's just loving yourself. It's just loving yourself, right? And so I'm still, like, there's some echoes of other things that um, weren't shown in this journey that, that trouble you, trouble your soul. That also makes it hard for you to just walk away because you feel it's unfinished because of the turmoil that still remains inside yourself. But they show me that in time, right? Because there's, there's infinite time. So what could be a million years to us is 30 seconds in this realm, you know? They show me that in time, this version of you does choose to go through the gateway. And that's all they're saying here about this. I'm also being shown that there's more that your soul's working through and processing um, based on what we've talked about and what we've seen um, and that there's love there that's helping you through it. 
um, but also that you do work through it. You do find your way to the other side of it and you do walk through the gateway. So whether you want to see that as happening today or you want to see that had happened um, a million years ago or you want to see that as happening a hundred years from now, it's up to you to decide. But you can say that this has happened today because in time it has. It's happened. It already has happened. It is happening and it will happen kind of thing, which means it's already happening. It's it's done. <laughs> they take me to the version of time when you do cross this gateway. And this is, uh, you actually are introduced to who you truly are. You, th you didn't realize this. You forgot about this somehow. But it's like you see a, a reflection of who you are and your head, your head is glowing with light. And you're just sort of in awe and confused. And you, you are because it's just like it's shocking. It's like been so long <laughs> and you're realizing how long it's actually been now. And then you're wondering why it took so long. <laughs> so there's still some of the human aspects um, kind of playing out here. Because this is very much so related to a soul that's been incarnating in this earth world for a while. Still takes some of the humanness with them. <sighs> I see you merging with this being and you actually enter into the heart of this being and he shares with you and all that you are um, it's like uh, it's a it's a frequency it's a vibration and it sort of ripples across your whole body and it and it brings peace to you and so that that's what he shares with you. He shares peace with you. It's amazing. Your whole body is like tingling. Like I can feel my whole body tingling and um, like cells opening up and I'm tingling all the way into my toes from the top of my head into my toes. Um, so you're tingling everywhere too like your energy field is literally tingling all over the place it's pretty amazing <sighs> wow Ugh. i'm i'm actually disconnecting from your energy field and i can feel myself coming back to me and so it, it's like a little delirious cuz that's a, a lot there <laughs> That was really, really incredible. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to connect with you and to get to know your soul more. <laughs> and uh, very, very unique experience today. Thank you so much for sharing as well. And for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.